for this one I'm going into design view and saving it as TBL orders hold and I'm saying OH orders hold ID and that's going to be my primary key that I have my orders hold customer ID so I know and of course this going to this field is going to relate to something else so I'm going to call it a number it's going to relate to a number and another an order number in a number another table so the data type doesn't need to be uh doesn't need to be the same data type but it does need to be the same type of data okay so uh, like order number is a number so we it's a order number in another table but it's a number over here so that means i need to change to one spot so that's good relational design and then i have a oh book id and that's gonna be a number as well and then i want to of course look at when the date was entered and i have date and the default value here is gonna be now yeah, no way to capitalize so they get the right word. Okay, press Control S and Control W to close out. Now I'm going to create another table. Okay, and design view. I'm going to save it as TBL Books. And here I'm going to have B book book ID B publisher ID and it's going to be a number because you know by ID and then B title which is going to be a text value it's going to hold alphanumeric characters then B price B price and it's going to be a it's going to hold uh, the price of it so I'm going to call it a, um, a actually a, let's see, I wanted to have a number so here you know that database in VBA you get to say whether it's a single or double or long integer or whatever but here it's a number and then you specify down here what type of a what type of data it's going to hold so byte integer long integer now I want to make it a double okay not like a double cheeseburger but a double and then my, my decimal place can be auto automatic okay now my next one is going to be uh, the price. So B category, I oh, sorry, category ID. What category is it? Okay, and that's going to be a number. And then when did I enter this book? Date entered. And date entered, and I'm going to call it now. save it and close it uh, next create table and I'm going to say this I want to go to design view and save it as TBL customers TBL customers okay and then I'm gonna have uh, customer C it's gonna be a customer ID Be order number, and then customer 
F name. I'm going to leave it at the customer L name. I'm like, if space is not as important right now, so with the, the you know, in the in days gone by, space was an issue on the most computers. You pay megabytes, okay, hard drives. So you're allocating this much space to that. So if the database is a little bit bigger because uh, I made this uh, 255 instead of 50. Um, it's really not going to be a big issue. But in days I'll buy it, it may have been. Yeah, cost wise, that is. So we have city and state and or uh, C region. Maybe that. Uh, I want to do region because uh, maybe you live in Canada and you have a province. Uh, so, and then C zip zip code, and same as puzzle code. C country, maybe you live in Africa or Europe or Britain or wherever you live at. C email. We want to do email one if you have various emails. Let's see, discount, discount rate. That's going to be a number because, uh, and it's going to be a double because maybe it's a percentage. So we're going to have double there. And then, see customer cents to put the year uh, customer cents customer cents and it's going to be a year or so we're not going to have a decimal place this year oh I forgot one thing so we're going to right click on that field I forgot the date entered right click on the field and then choose design view and then when was the customer entered the customers entered uh, it was entered date time to the right now. Okay. There's an environmental variable called uh, get user ID. I haven't tested that, but it goes out and gets the uh, gets the 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 Windows login name. <clears throat> so you possibly could do this. I haven't tested this. Username. Let's see if it if identifies. If it identifies with it. If it is, folks, it's the first time I use this, really. I don't really do it by a form, but get username. Uh, no. But you could do a, a function, your own function, and put it there. Environ. And then I think it's a username. Yeah, I guess maybe that works. Let's see if it works. Or not. No, it thought I liked it. Anyway, well, just leave that field out then. So delete a field, highlight it, and then delete row. Okay, so that's the end of that. Now on to our other other table, a create table, and then this one is going to be called TBL Publishers. Publishers. And then we have Publisher, Publisher, Publisher ID. And we have P Publisher Code. Maybe an alphanumeric code, so I'm going to leave it as that. And then P, I'm going to leave it as text edit. It's like a string and a uh, NVBA. 
string. Hold the alpha number, and then the name. Okay, and then p date entered. Date entered in date time. And here I'm gonna my default value is gonna be now. Again. Okay. Oh, by the way, I can press F6 to go down the properties, and F6 to go back up again. All right, go over here. Then I could use it. I could use this. I, uh, you may have seen me do this roll uh, like in the video where I did it. But if you press Shift Tab, you go back. Shift uh, Tab to go forward. Shift Tab back. Okay. And then my last table is going to be called TBL TBL orders, and then I'm going to have order uh, order ID. I'm going to be more specific with that one. Order ID and then O customer. Who, who, what customer was it that ordered it? And I'm going to make it a and then I'm going to have. Book ID, and then I'm gonna have because I want to know what book they ordered, and then I'm gonna have O order filled by order filled, and that's gonna be a, a yes no. Yes, no, it's the same as a boolean in uh, VBA. And then, when was the order taken, of course? Date entered. So, I have date time, and it's going to be now. Okay. Now... That was uh, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I want to go ahead and relate these. So I click on database tools, database tools, and then relationships. Okay, it's going to be all of these tables here. So I'm going to highlight, I click the first one, hold down the shift key, click the last one, and then click add, then click close. I'll move these around here. Okay, so on my category, this is a good way to print up the overview of their database, kind of a, uh, a storyboard of it if you want, or to paste the, uh, to draw up a little sketch of it, to do a little visio document, okay, whatever. So I want this one over here, kind of gives you a good understanding of what, what your database is all about. All right, and then we have orders over here. So I'm gonna organize this a bit. Let's see, TBL customers. I want to see all my fields. So I want to drag down a bit. My books table gonna be right over here, and I'm gonna go down here and try to find it. Okay, and then I want publishers. So it gives you an idea of whatever's going on here. And let's see here. Now I want to go ahead and connect these, connect them all. So my category, my books are going to relate by category. ID. And when I when I can enforce referential integrity, it's going to say one to many down here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. 
one to many. Enforce referential integrity. Category ID to category ID, and I shouldn't have any errors if I do it did it right in my table design. And uh, for more information about that, go look at my, one of my other videos about uh, uh, referential integrity. One to many. Great. Again, I have the same data type, or the same type of data, sorry, order number and number. Remember, it's ID. And then my customer ID goes by customer table. Customer ID, customer. Notice that these are all the fields in your table. Customer ID to customer ID here. Oh, the database engine could not log TBL orders because it's already in use by another person. That means that it's being used right now. Ah, I have it open right here. Well, I have to close it out. Okay, I've closed it out. Now I can probably I can probably do this again. So one customer has to be a valid customer first. So go ahead. Now I don't have an error. Then I have my book ID. Go to my book ID in this table, my order table, because I am ordering a valid book. And I have uh, my publisher ID goes to uh, the publisher ID over here, and bang, that should uh, should fix me up. Publisher ID, then I have my order ID. Everything is uh, referential integrityized. So again, the book table. It's it's full of book information. The category contains category names. Customer contains customer information. The orders contains orders information. The orders hold temporal temporarily stores information about the books a customer wants to buy during the ordering process. Kind of like a little holding tank. Hey, I'm interested in these uh, wish list. The records in this transactional table will be inserted into the orders table when the customer decides to save an order. It's kind of like a template. And then publisher. Publisher contains publisher information. All right. So that's great. Uh, next, we're going to go on to how to program this and how to make it work together. We're going to go on to the, the programming side of things. So come on back and uh, hope you enjoyed this part. Bye.